you. Um, welcome to the Thursday, April 27th meeting of the Northampton Planning Board. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five items on the agenda tonight. The first item is a seven o'clock site plan, uh, Rachel Borson wave design standards, <coughs> element two, to allow for an alternative front door facing the street at one Garfield Street, Florence map ID 17D-081. Uh, thank you, John. Um, I'm sorry, we, uh, we open meetings with public comment. So if anyone has anything they want to bring to our attention that's not on the agenda, now would be the time to do it. I was tipped off by the, the nature of the crowd. Um, now I've already introduced the first item number. Carolyn, you want to give us a little background on this? Um, sure. So if you um, <coughs> recall the, the zoning, and I put this in the, um, <coughs> in the staff memo, but for the U.S. A, B, and C districts, <coughs> there are sort of these minimal design um, requirements for by right development for single family home. Single family home is definitely allowed by right um, in this case, and there are some of those standards are waivable by the planning board. This happens to be one of them. The idea is that um, the front door of new homes in these um, that are essentially infill lots within existing neighborhoods should face the street, but the board has the jurisdiction to allow alternative layouts um, on a case-by-case -case basis. So this is site plan. It's not a special permit. So site plan means that um, a uh, simple majority of the board that approves and you're just really looking at that design element not really anything else um, related to the site so the question before us is the front door on this design acceptable uh, given what we were intending to do when we wrote the design standards and and the other thing I might add as well is that um, the reason as you can see in the applicant will describe in more detail the um, the door is not on that front plane, the facade of the building, and that's what the building commissioner felt that um, it would be, that's what, why he wanted to send it to the board for approval, because that was his <coughs> interpretation of, of how that laid out. Can you give us a quick explanation of how it's on the lot? Yeah, sure. Um, Dory Brooks from Jones with the Architects. Uh, so part of it, uh, the challenge of the site itself is that the site doesn't have a single front face. This, according to the comprehensive permit that was granted for the property, this is a street here. It's not here. This is a, uh, an access easement to the property. Um, there's a lot of other complicating histories for the property itself. But in interpreting that lot and looking at the guidelines, our intention was to be sure that the door faced the street, which is what the language says. Um, so we angled the door this direction intentionally. Um, it's a very fairly small lot with a uh, conservation area to, the, to this direction. Um, so the intention was to put the living area looking that direction. Um, and that really made this a premium space for the owner. Um, so that's why we have these two volumes and how we've arranged them in an angled way so that the angling allows it to really gesture to the street so that you would really see this. Nobody would ever approach from here. There's no road, there's no sidewalk, there's just a a gully, essentially, <laughs> you know. So that made sense to us. So it was a, a bit of a surprise um, to have that response and to even kind of have to bring it forward. But I understand the guidelines are somewhat traditional in their assumption. And I think probably the building inspector is still working with them, too. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's a fine fellow. But I mean, I think we are all trying to find, you know, the sort of static <coughs> state for those. Um, are there any opinions about it of the board members or any questions of Dory? It's just, it's a funky site you know it's a it it's is. a yeah. I think infill lots will characteristically come to us yes. that way yeah. <laughs> yeah it's nice to see that finally get built on though and the, and the door is in the front it just doesn't face it right. faces right. the front it, it's yeah. not so on the this front I found right. the facade to see it. so this is actually a, a sort of the bedroom volume this is the living room volume and this is where you want to get people in and that's facing this plane so the 3d gives it a little bit easier right. view of it um, and it's also we tried to scale it to in association with the houses in the area, despite the so it's only a 1,700 square foot house on a uh, fairly small lot. As you know, it was a narrow lot for the competition. Um, so yeah, it's been a, a challenging lot to work with, <laughs> and uh, we're certainly doing our best to address all those issues. 
Any other comments or questions? I just think they've been really, they've been really creative. I think it's great to kind of see you try to figure out how to use this site, so I appreciate it. Yeah. I don't have any problem with it at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't either. In fact, I was thinking about it like if you had enclosed a three-season porch, which many houses of age have done, then you wouldn't have the front door on the front facade for many houses in town. So that's kind of the way it, it seems fine with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, any other discussion or questions? Nope. Okay. And he brought it in front of us, but at the same time, he... He approved it. Yeah. You know, so he right. he yeah. he chimed in and said it's it's. Yeah. Good. He he circled back and said that. Right. I think if mm -hmm. if he he just felt like he wanted yeah. assurance from us. Which is fine. Yeah. So could I get a motion on seven o'clock item? We're on public comment. Um, sorry. Yes, we do have a, <laughs> a new member of the public in. Would you like to comment on this project? There's no to need move, to, to close. I don't think I need to. Motion to close public comment. Yes, motion to close and second close public comment that was really only hardly opened um, now I need a motion to to motion to waive design standard element number two for one Garfield Street Florence map ID 17 d-081 to allow an alternative to the front door facing the street requirement thank you second by John all in favor thank you, thank you thanks um, we are unfortunately running ahead of schedule. Is there any? Uh, we could do the two ANRs right now. Um, yeah, the two ANRs have never materialized, so okay. we'll go to the next <laughs> item, which is Emerson Way. Yes. So, um, I'm sorry, we have just by explanation. We since we schedule the agenda, we have to wait till seven twenty. I'm sorry. Um. So um, Emerson Way is the subdivision um, off of Birds Pit Road. Um, on the south side of Birds Pit Road, it's been under construction for many years. <coughs> and it's gone through multiple phases of, develop of getting to the stage where it is now, so uh, sort of a phased build out. Um, the applicant currently has a, a tri-party uh, has a performance guarantee in the form of covenants on several parcels as well as a tri-party agreement with the city and the bank to financially guarantee that the road work and the infrastructure, um, water pump house and everything gets built in accordance to the approved plans. Um, they're at a point now where um, they um, they actually don't need both types of performance guarantee. So they're, um, they were going to come in to adjust the tri-party agreement because it's, get, it's, going to, uh, it's getting close to expiration, but um, they also need to rewrite it on the figure. So what they're asking the board is to consolidate their performance guarantee to <coughs> one type, which would be a tri-party agreement, which is a financial performance guarantee, and then re have the uh, release of the lots. Um, they have, I'm just going to put the figures here. Um, it's uh, two, um, oops, 200, $69,000, I believe, and um, I just want to pull up the total figure. Um, they've identified the m items that are remaining to be done. DPW has signed off on that um, value. Um, and they um, just need to put together the text of the agreement and have our city solicitor sign off on it. But basically, the we can't, the mayor and the city solicitor can't sign off until the board approves the sort of the transition from both forms consolidating to one so um, it just takes a vote of the planning board to say yes it's okay to go to this financial guarantee instead of both a lock sale covenant and a financial guarantee so the what i was what i'm going to ask is that um, or what they're asking for is a vote to release the covenants um, and I have a document um, for that 
so that would allow them to sell the remaining lots, build and sell the remaining lots, um, and then maintain this other um, agreement with the city about building out, um, finishing the rest of the infrastructure. Um, but we wouldn't release this um, covenant release to them until we've got the final language of the tri-party agreement in place. Who are the three parties to the tri-party agreement? <laughs> The developer, the, the bank, bank, and the city. city okay. Yeah. And this so is for like sewer and stuff? It's for the, it's for, um, so this subdivision doesn't have sewer. It's, um, I'm sorry, um, there, it's water, it's um, sewer, it's um, trees, it's curbing, it's pavement. Oh, okay. It's the entire build out of the road. They've gotten the, they basically have done everything except the top coat on the final phase, and they just installed the water. They had to do a pump house for the water, which you may have remembered when they came back. Yeah. So that has just been finished. So they've sort of taken that off of the um, list of items that need to be completed. Um, and so it's really down to sort of finishing out the subdivision. They're, they're at that sort of tail end. So instead of holding lots and buildable lots is kind of collateral. They just want to say, hey, we've got this much money, and we'll hold that collateral. That's right. And it would be 200. Because we want to sell the lots. Yeah. That's right. And it would be $263,000 and 40. Okay. 263 basically. Not holding in cash, but. A, but the bank a, a is holding it back. From, so. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Right. Do I hear a second? Second. Mark second. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, so it's John and Mark. Uh -huh. okay. It's one of those where I think it makes sense. I, I can so easily understand the cash covenant and the lock covenant doesn't quite set with me right. So. Yeah. Well, when you get to, I, I think at the beginning it makes sense, but when you get to the point where there's a right. mm -hmm. few lots left, then. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just straight. keeps them honest. Okay, um, bear with us. We trying to take care of some administrative business until we get to the 720 agenda item. You're too efficient. Um, well, it's because I skipped so many <laughs> steps. <laughs> That's my method, my madness. Here. Um, we didn't have any minutes for this one. No. Did not. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. I Well, one thing we can do is um, we will actually just as a foreshadowing, we will not be dealing with the 750 item um, tonight. So so disappointing. Yep, the special <laughs> permit for the one curb cut uh, at Atwood Drive uh, likely Carolyn thinks may come to us on May 11th. Should should we toss what we have or hang on to it? Um, or is it going to be replaced with something? Um, I would keep it for now. And then actually at that time, I mean, you will uh, will have to officially vote to continue it to a date and time um, mm -hmm. for that. Because um, I'm not sure yet what on the site will change um, based on the stormwater. So yeah. the um, I don't think the <coughs> building will. Well, we haven't opened to this item yet, have we? No. So, no. if we don't open it, we don't need to vote to continue it, do we? You do because it was set. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to. You have to open it to continue it. Otherwise, we'd have to re-advertise. So, if you just um, okay. vote okay. and continue it to the next meeting, right. then it would be fine. It says maybe continued without opening. Without discussion, I guess I should say you can. Con oh. You ba you just have to open it for the purposes of continuing it. That's all the other business that we had. Is that on the? Yeah, it's the A and R's. Do you have slides from your trip you want to show us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not up there. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting to see. <laughs> your Instagram account. Um, I will. Not I can say that we're. Um, uh, we're 
as we did in the fall, we hosted two um, young professionals from Southeast Asia, and we're doing that again starting, um, actually they're coming on Saturday. Oh. Um, they're both um, women, but from different countries. One is from the Philippines and the other is from Myanmar, and they're going to be here for a month. So they will likely come to one or, or more um, public meetings, maybe a planning board meeting. <coughs> studying um, they're sort of in the environmental sustainability track that on mm -hmm. the program that they're here for so um, you might see them in the coming mm -hmm. <laughs> months and uh, out of the month um, so that should be interesting oh, good. To have, have you again. spoken with them just email yep good, good language skills I mean will you have to be translating for them? No, no, I think, Good. yeah, it should be fine. Okay. Neighbor. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it depends on what clock you use, right? Now, you know, actually, um, because we do run into this occasionally, what is the harm on running the clock with an intro? Like, why, why put it on the time of the use that it's in the Well, we've had that discussion. I mean, I've done that occasionally, and then it's not worked out so well. Yeah. I know you're frustrated. People get, so. Yeah, people get mad if they... Kind show up for seventh panel it doesn't start till quarter of nine, you know, yeah. or whatever, yeah. because the with the first one goes long. Yep. Why would they be upset with that? I don't know that this will affect anybody, but um, leading up to the next one. Which, Dan, are you presenting in the next one? Yeah. Okay. Um, for note of disclosure, just because of my work, uh, I have occasion to work with uh, the designers who are presenting, and that's the case tonight, uh, that we're working with Tom Douglas Architects. But uh, if anyone in the public that still remains feels that, or on the board, doesn't think I can be impartial, which I, I don't have an issue with, uh, I can recuse myself. Otherwise, I will hear this one through. So. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll recuse myself. Any uh, any uh, interest in Mark recusing himself? He's just trying to get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got another one. If he gets it out of this one, there's stuff. Over and get a donut. Over and get a donut or something. Yeah. <laughs> Set up my easel since there's only one more minute to go. Yeah. Is he allowed to do that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, ruling he doesn't create an undoing advantage. From a rule based person like me, I'm sure you can guess. A few for Asians. Something like that. Isn't that a B for Asians? Do you use an Asian? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it works what they're doing, but it's just a. Before they, before this came before us, before us, I thought it was just an odd setup. So like the public. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, when it, we had to. Oh really? We looked at Bob. It was just the whole thing with the church was so. Initially, so it's okay. Yeah. Like, in like, you know, yeah. Got this. We had, we didn't. They were just. Okay, we have arrived at 7:20. Um, I'd like to.
Open the agenda item for special permit amendment, unique lodging LLC to modify the number of units, creating five apartments and four lodging units at, 40, at 74 Bridge Street, Northampton, map ID 32A-177. I'll hear a motion to open public comment. Uh, presentation first. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Would you like to tell us what you're up to? Sure. My name is Dan Bonham. I work for Tom Douglas um, here representing uh, Unique Lodging LLC. They have a um, special permit that they are applying for a, a, an amendment to. Um, and in essence, um, they're proposing no changes to the exterior of the buildings or the lot coverage. Um, but currently, in the front building, they have uh, one apartment, which is the owner's unit, and then four lodging units. And in the back, they have two lodging units and accessory storage and office space. And they would like to um, convert um, to uh, four lodging units in the front and then five dwelling units, so creating all the back in-group dwelling units. Um, this is the existing site plan here. Um, and then this is the proposed site plan showing uh, parking for 12 cars, uh, screening for the dumpster, screening for the cars parked on the side here. The large blank area is existing paving, pavement. Um, and um, the lodging units are all just under, well, they're about 825 square feet each, so they're below 1,000 square feet each. Um, <coughs> and essentially, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I did speak with Dave Valletta today from the DPW about uh, sewage requirements, et cetera. He, he is on board with it. Um, gave me verbal approval today. So. Yeah, DPW didn't have it so. Okay, yeah. so, I mean, this does affect both the water intake and the sewer coming out for more, more residents in that building. Right. Is, is there a... The in submittal indicates, as far as square feet, that it, the lodging units are around 500 square feet apiece? Correct. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you before. So I thought you said they were a thousand. The, the dwelling units, the new the dwelling units will oh, be under a thousand. Yeah, okay. 850, I believe, each. Here it says 756. Six. Seven, sorry, that would be correct, 756. Yeah. There's no, the footprint does not change. There are no changes other than turning a garage door into a, a entry door. The so the biggest change I see is that what used to be the storage for vehicles in the back of that property now has turned into vehicles dispersed around the property. And there yeah, are of them. Um, yeah, we end up with basically a lot allotment for new, more car parking, and one of them would have to park basically in front of what was a garage rather than inside the garage. Is there any visitor parking in that story? Uh, no. Is, is there, I mean, is it fair to expect, and this is more a question to the rest of us, this property is only a block or two from town, so is it fair to hope that maybe we wouldn't be dealing with each unit having a car or maybe not lock, keeping it there? providing a shed for bike storage here as well mm -hmm. on site um, and the <coughs> there's the traffic impact fee <coughs> which we the owner has offered to pay so. can you just describe I just um, was uh, wondering uh, we had spoken about the um, dumpster area and the uh, up. how does that parking space in front of that area where this shown is the dumpster how would that work yeah well it's really just the rolling dumpster carts the small oh. so i mean currently he has a large dump dumpster there as he moves his office out it no longer has need for you know quantity of trash right now i think he has week 
we pick up, we never picked up as often as required. Uh, for the smaller rolling dumpsters. So what you just told me is that the rolling dumpsters can go around the cars. Yeah. Yep. This area is currently paved here. Yeah. I would believe, believe that with you mean the rolling ones. You mean the the um, the, the plastic ones with five the, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what size they are. Yet, so. one, one cubic yard or nine units are going to have how many of those? Um, I don't have the answer to that question. There's no way that. No, I mean, nine units would barely, barely be adequate to have a two-yard dumpster. But I guess, I suppose that's their problem. The lodging units themselves don't have um, cooking facilities in them. So, is there a kitchen? Yeah, that's shared kitchen. <clears throat> yeah. So there's there is a <clears throat> kitchen here, and there in, in the main room. Uh, main house in the owner's unit and there are no kitchens in the, the lodging units in the main house. There are or will be kitchens in the dwelling units in the back. But the people in the big house don't have access to the owner's kitchen. Correct. Mm -hmm. So they're just in a hotel room. It's a suite hotel room, yes, basically. So I, <coughs> you have to excuse me. Can you can you explain what the project? So it's a hotel. What, what uh, is he this? has, a, a, I believe, it's a rooming house license, and so they're sort of extended stay professors who are in town for a week or two. Basically, is who's using this space, um, and he has some extended stays um, he'd like to do in the back, which are you know maybe someone who's in town for for a semester or longer. Still operating as a a rooming house, lodging house, but not um, not as a hotel per se. Is so there a what? Way it, to tell as long um, as people can stay in a place that has no cooking facilities. No, um, I don't know if under other codes, not for z for zoning purposes, no. But I couldn't tell you if there's anything for board of health or the building code. I, I don't. No, but uh, from a zoning perspective, there's no time limit for um, anything, even an apartment rental. We don't say that you have to rent a minimum of 30 days or two days. Maximum uh, of, but they have kitchens. Right, but it does, I'm just suggesting yeah. that we, okay. it's not, it's yeah. okay. silent in the zoning Got it. ordinance. Got it. The requirement of a lodging house does not include access to a kitchen. Well, typically our definition is that there's a shared kitchen, and that's how it's how a lodging house is made up of lodging units where right. there's a shared kitchen so facility. So how does this qualify? Yeah. Um, I thought there had been a shared kitchen in the main house originally. I think that's the way it was presented, so I don't know if that's changed over time. I think going back even to 2007, the last time this was here, I believe there was a shared kitchen kitchen so I I don't um, that's the first I've heard I don't know how that would so it's a special permit because it's a lodging house right right because of the kitchen issue because of yeah, the we don't allow hotels in the URC district but we do allow lodging houses but this doesn't seem to qualify as a lodging house because it doesn't have a central kitchen yeah yeah um, well I don't know if you can the way that, that it's broken up the original shared kitchen with it is also shared by the owner's unit. So, um, and, and that is, that is, there is access from the main corridor directly into it. And, you know, I don't know exactly how the business operates on a day-to-day -day basis, but all one has to do is open that door and there's your coffee maker, there's all your other kind of amenities. Um, so, and it, so it's, <clears throat> part of the owner's space, but it's not prohibited from guests. That's my understanding, yes. So the owner has a 5,600 square foot Including the basement the and the, yep. And he's going to share his kitchen with four lodging house units. 
So, so you rent out. It's like a, it's more like a, it's like a B and B. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. With like an open long term B and B. Does he rent out rooms in his main house? Yeah. Actually, even in a B and B, suites. So they just get served breakfast. They can't. Yeah, but sometimes there's like an. I mean, it's like an open. You know, you can help yourself kind of. Right. I mean, that sounds like what this. So they do have access to the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the issue is to have the access to that kitchen, right? right? Physical access. Yeah. The kitchen, that's the thing. And there are two ways to get there, either from the second floor and down the stairs within the unit, <coughs> or from the main floor uh, directly into that kitchen. Okay. So in order to come from <coughs> the second floor, they'd go through the owner's living area? Um, yeah, yeah, well, it's a, kind of a uh, back central stair. So there's two main stairs within the, the house, one that runs kind of across this way and then a more grand one that <coughs> runs this way in the front. Both of those have, you have access connecting both those central spaces on the second floor and on the first floor. Any other questions? Are we still pondering the kitchen? Have we sort of gotten yeah. to the bottom of that one? I think so. I mean, yeah, because I thought a few minutes ago you said that they wouldn't yeah. have access. Yeah. And so I was just, I don't know if, well, um, if the project. They don't have kitchens in their units. Right. The owner has one. The owner has one, and they are, he is hosting them very much. So it's, you know. Okay. I think that, it's uh, next door that way. Relating yeah. it to a, a bed and breakfast is probably the most simple way to explain it. So let me just understand the difference. The key is how, how many units they have in there? That's your there are nine units. Right, and you have 12, 12, 12 mm -hmm. Is There is any building or number of parking for occupancy? There is some relationship in well, the, it's That's why the mitigation thing? Yeah, one, one per lodging unit. And two per dwelling unit over 1,000 square feet. Only the owners do need this. This has been functioning as a lodging house currently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a long time. How old is that developed? Um, the, the, like the units in the back, you know, the Um. 2007. 2007, yeah. Yeah, right in the. Maybe, the, maybe originally five and they came after an amendment and it's seven. For the back. Yeah. yeah. Garage. yeah. So but he, he bought the property with the license that it has for the type of business that he's running out of it. So. It was previously a lodging when it was bought? When it was, oh, okay. For, yeah. Yeah. Alan, are you satisfied about the trash? I mean, it looks like to me at, at the end of that unit that there's room to put. Yeah, I mean, they're clearly they're going to need a full dumpster, but it appears there's plenty of room for it. Yeah. Well, or four or five little dumpsters. Right. That's yeah. what it takes right. to get around cars. Right. right. Um, the power gate, so I actually think they'll <coughs> drive in and it's like the big estate. It opens yeah. up. If you have the key fob, it will. Uh, you can enter a code or you can call uh, into the owner. Hmm. And that's existing. Yeah. Right. Huh. It's usually open. It's always open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember seeing it closed. And when I, I drove by a couple times, and it's, it seemed to always be open. Huh. The only other question I had staff uh, brought up was the um, payment in lieu of. Of uh, two thousand versus, uh, oh no, it's a thousand per for two spots, so it is two thousand. Okay, right. okay. So, I don't. I just want to discuss it. There's no need to condition the access to the kitchen, is there? No. Okay. Um, any other questions for that? Um, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you've done it within, within the existing footprint. I mean, I'm happy to have more, you know, small units close to downtown. Um, well, actually, aren't there fewer? Mm -mm. Um, there are seven.
seven now. Seven going to nine. nine yeah, they're turning. Oh, what but the, were well, including the garage, right? Well, yeah. yeah. But for the small ones, for for lodging house, right, it's going fewer. Yeah. I, I really sound. <coughs> these more, these more two units. in the back are currently categorized as lodging, and we're converting them, them to, to dwelling because they have full kitchens. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. I mean, it sounds to me like it's more like a hotel. Than I, I, I have a feeling that access to the kitchen will turn out to be illusory. But, I, you know, it's not, I guess, the worst thing in the world. It's maybe we have a need for hotel units uh, in that part of town. And I, I guess, I mean, I, I don't know why, if we were serious about the definition of a lodging house, why wouldn't we require access to the kitchen since it seems pretty theoretical only. Uh, I think I think it's really more about ensuring that they're in compliance with their lodging house license and um, so they get inspected annually. It's only I, I don't know what the time period is, but I think that would Right, more an enforcement thing than a mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. right. More of an enforcement thing than a conditional thing. Mm -hmm. They're representing that it's a lodging house, so to do that, they have to meet the certain standards, and they would. Um, I don't know what the time, the inspection timing is, but because of its nature, its use, that it does. And so, just to reaffirm that there's no issue with the, the DPW. They had no concern. <coughs> Any other questions or thoughts about it? No eye contact was made. Anyone want to make a motion? Is there any public comment? Yeah, uh, is there any public comment on this project? No, no, I actually came for the very first item, which I missed. No. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were quite quick with it. We all agreed to it. It was unanimous. Um, to change it or to keep it, I'm sorry. Uh, we accepted the ch the as designed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we could have settled that 20 minutes ago for you. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. I, I'm enjoying this hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Some nights are better than others. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I get a motion on this? And well, well, one thing I would like to say that uh, we need a condition for prior to issuing a certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall submit as offered a one-time payment in lieu of traffic mitigation for the um, new increase of trips, $2,000 to be used to offset impacts of additional peak hour trips generated by the units. With stated condition, I move approval of special permit amendment for unique lodging LLC to modify the number of units, creating five apartments, four lodging units at 74 Bridge Street, near Hampton, uh, map ID 32A-177. Clearly done. Thank you, John. Second. Second. Second by Tess. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are almost at seven. <laughs> 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 so I've been Bye, thank running you. a lodging house all this time for my kids, basically. With <laughs> <laughs> access to the kitchen. That's right, yeah. Who knew? Yeah, yeah. It sounded awfully familiar to me. I know. <laughs> I think I could just see the light go off. You see a new business opportunity. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Right? You guys live in a lodging house. What's going on? Yeah. Why does North Hampton not allow hotels? But, um, what is well, this is an urban thing? residential seed district, so it's not the central business district. Sorry. In the central business, in the business district, hotels are fine. Okay. It's just this is the edge really of. Close. Yes, right. it's right the on the edge. Yeah. is like one right parcel away. Got it, got it. So um, that's. I wonder if it, the building inspector is still the point person on doing the lodging inspection. Or is that by complaint? No, I, well, I don't know if you know uh, about those inspections, but I think for certain uses, there are regular inspections. Uh -huh. So, you know, just like as in hotels, they do fire inspection and, right. you know, these other Well, things. I could imagine, you know, you would want, if you didn't have access to a kitchen, you would want to have some certainty that people weren't creating makeshift kitchens in right. bedroom units. The right. question is, like, what is the definition of a kitchen? I mean, my dad runs a bed breakfast in Hawaii, and he's, like, always skirting this this yeah. this rule. And it's like, 
Well, a kitchen is any place with a, like, with a stove. Well, that does that include a hot plate? Right. You know, right. Like, right. Oh, oh, right. Well, and Ikea is selling a $600 kitchen now. I mean, we can actually have a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Dan. Um, I think we can. 740. 740, open the item zoning ordinance amendment to 350-4.7 and code ordinances 156-6B to expand effective dates permit time limits from two to three years consistent with the Municipal Modernization Act. Yeah. about that, Carolyn? Um, yeah, so... Yes. Over the, since, um, um, I guess sort of to back it up a little bit, the, um, in, for a long time, the state's, um, the statutes allowed um, permits that are issued by boards <coughs> to be valid for two years. You'd have to substantially exercise, you'd have to exercise them um, <coughs> to a certain degree within that two year window. And 2008 hit and um, uh, affected the economy and the legislature passed um, several consecutive um, bills that um, temporarily extended the time by which anybody for any permit that was issued throughout the Commonwealth would have an additional, first it was um, uh, two years and then it was four years. Um, and that's um, applied across the board. Nobody had to do anything with their permit. It was just um, decreed at the state level. Your permit's valid for additional four years. Um, and then um, that ended, I think, to, well, actually 2017. So um, in August, as part of this huge bill that um, was passed, this Municipal Modernization Act, the um, state, um, passed a provision that enabled local um, governments to increase um, sort of on a permanent basis that um, time period from two to three years. But it didn't um, decree it uniformly. It just mm -hmm. said if a community wants to do that, they can. When it passed, I think there was a little bit of confusion because um, it's certainly from our office, we thought that it meant, oh, it's three years now and we don't have to do anything. And then we realized that the language was that you can opt to do, to do that. So um, this is merely to, um, this change in the permit time limits would affect um, um, zoning related issued um, permits, but also central business architecture permits because they follow the um, site plan special permit timelines. And the idea is to provide the maximum allowed under state statute and not, and, and under the, um, with the idea that you all are granting these permits for um, hopefully be because the, they comply with the zoning and there shouldn't be a reason to pull back on that after one more additional year they should still be valid in three years so why not take mm -hmm. that to the next step so that's really I, I guess that would be my, my only question and maybe it would be a fairly rare occurrence but you know could it ever be the tail wagging the dog of you've got this person they've got this permit it's available it's open for three years something larger I mean could they hold up something that maybe the city, if something changes, the city wants to do something. I mean, I, I guess could it end up being a, an obstacle to somehow a larger effort? Yeah. I mean, I, I think there are obviously, we, um, you all have been part of the conversation for changing zoning and allowing different things or, or pulling back and restricting certain things. So there, I could see potentially an issue where someone may have been issued a permit um, and then the zoning changes and maybe um, that permit might not be allowed under a new zoning, but there's also a whole host, uh, there's a whole provision for pre-existing nonconformities as well. So, you know, there's, there will always be those situations, I think, no matter how long a, a permit is and There's issued. a mechanism by which you could handle them. And, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Have developments here typically 
taken or you know have people really like come up to that line of two years and been like oh my gosh we've got to really get started or yeah so yeah. we've had a few occasions where people have um for whatever reason they're it's longer to get financing or mm -hmm. they um things change like if it's a smaller project and family structures change or whatever they can't quite get their project off the ground yet um, and they've had to come back for an amendment mm -hmm. just to push that push date that back. Day. You've probably approved a few of those. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the HAP housing project, mm -hmm. um, you approved an extension of time mm -hmm. on that one. Um, going back to sort of before the legislature adopted the emergency sort of immediate extension um, the police station project had to come back for um, a date extension. That was around 2007, 2008 anyway, but um, that one came back. So there have been a few mm -hmm. instances of that. And it's not an incentive to just delay. Well, that is the worry that I have. That yeah, I mean, the, it, the, the property is unsightful. It's not being developed as fast as it would be. Um, you, you know, it, it can get, it can go another year before we can really do anything about it. So I assume the thought is that if they needed or they wanted to do this, I mean, that they had a reason for wanting to do it. Right. You know, Generally speaking, I would think if the permit is actually pulled. Because it's costing them money. Right. It right. doesn't, it's not cost effective to sit on it. Right. Some local developers notwithstanding. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or thoughts or questions about this for Carolyn? Are other, like, are we sort of in the same time frame as other cities? Or like around the state? Like is it, or have other cities already adopted the? Um, you know, I didn't do that search. That's probably, that's a good question. I should probably do that before Take it back. the council. <laughs> <laughs> because that'll probably come up again. I don't know how many municipalities have gone ahead and, and done that yet. Because it was just adopted in August. August. Right. So. Do you know how other states, um, if Massachusetts is saying three years, up to three years, do, is that in line? Do you know with other states or is it? Um, yeah, two and three year time windows are pretty typical, I think. Okay. Can I get a motion for this one? So move. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Uh, uh, Alan. Wants to make the change to the ordinance for so two to three years. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's what we are recommending. And that's not John a joint board. committee, right? We John don't need to be there. there. Right. It doesn't. This one. So that's a good question. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. uh, so John was second. <laughs> um, so um, it does need to go to legislative matters. I think that um, you know it's just their meeting May eighth. Mm -hmm. They typically, if they don't have a joint hearing with the planning board, would want to be so the last board, but the last subcommittee before it goes back to full council. Um, I didn't really see a need to try to coordinate um, a meeting, a joint meeting for this one, so that's why. Right. So the motion will be to recommend to them mm -hmm. that they accept the three mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I still second it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what Alan meant. Right. <laughs> Um, how can you be against municipal modernization after all? Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to put this on the um, screen. Yeah, this one is a little more complicated. This is the map story. Yeah. Some of you weren't. Wait, she, able she only to allotted five minutes for it, so I mean, how could it be more complicated? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's easier to see. <laughs> <laughs> So back in um, 
March, um, we had a joint public hearing with the Legislative Matters um, Committee to expand the what we call the 40R district and make some tax changes to allow for that expansion. 40R is a provision in the state statute that's outside of zoning um, and allows, is, is a basically a housing production incentive by the state. And so um, with 40R, if you draft and adopt legislation at, at the local level, um, ordinances at the local level, and the state approve the state has to approve that language. But um, if you then build under that provision and permit housing units under that um, 40R provision, there is a so far there's a, been a pot of money set aside from the state as an incentive to the municipality um, for the construction of affordable housing units. So the first 40R district was created at this at Village Hill um, back in 2007. Um, we knew that we were going to have um, affordable housing units um, there, and that's up on the screen in this, um, the green and blue area. Can you zoom in on the next slide? I think shows it our um, Down in the left-hand corner. Yeah, yeah, so this, oops, jeez. Okay. Um, so the green area um, and the blue were the districts created initially in 2007. So, um, and the city has received money from the state for construction. Um, there's an incentive um, amount of money that the city received, and then for each housing unit after that that's built, um, theoretically, the city would get um, additional money from the state. We've put that towards the initial pot of money that we received for the state hospital has been put towards um, design of um, traffic improvements at the state main elm intersection there. So that's what's helping move that whole piece forward. Um, this um, modification for the expansion initially came, which is what we had the public hearing for in March, um, was um, to expand. And this is next to the lodging house mm -hmm. project that you all just reviewed. It's this. Um, well, it's not showing up very well on the screen, but the light blue in the f upper right corner. Um, and that's just one parcel, but we knew that um, Valley Community Development Corporation was going to expand the number of um, affordable um, units there. And the only way they could do that was either through, had to do, have, they would have to have some zoning relief, either through 40B, which is an affordable housing development, program that w whereby it would go to the zoning board or if we rezone this 40R not only would they do their project but the city could get some incentive payments for that. So we had the public hearing in March about that. The state hadn't quite finished reviewing our language modification, language changes it, um, so it couldn't go back to city council. In that intervening time that we were waiting um, Mass Development announced that they had um, granted the um, development um, rights for the former uh, pro transformations development project at the State Hospital to um, a combination of Valley CDC and, and um, community builders at the State Hospital. So this purple area up there at the State Hospital is the land that has been um, now um, set aside for the purposes of developing additional affordable housing units by community builders and Valley CDC. They will come back to the board, obviously, for approval because it's a much different development scheme than was approved by transformations. But because we know that that's going to be affordable housing units, we wanted to, um, at the same time, wrap this piece of the 40R expansion into the package that had already been moving itself um, through the process of approval. But that triggered a requirement for us to have another public hearing. So this functions as the public hearing for this piece of it. Um, it will also go back to legislative matters. I didn't try, again, I didn't try to pull you together because that was, that's a little bit complicated and I figured we went through it for the big, the other change and that we could do it separately this time. 
So um, the reason why we're doing this public hearing again is just really to add this map change. And there's a minor text change that just acknowledges what we would call as a sub-district C at Village Hill. And the state is also was fine with wrapping that into their current review process. And they should be done reviewing that by next week in time to go to council. All right. Uh, two questions. So the, the the transformations development, that included some, I thought, affordable housing areas, but it wasn't under 40R? The transformations was not proposing any um, affordable housing as defined by the state. So okay. not, it would, it, they were proposing to build more mar modest market rate housing units, not technically okay. affordable. But that, but that was within a... The, this 40-yard designation, did that exist prior to? Not in this part of the state okay, hospital. Right. So where that purple outline is, is really most of the transformations, um, former right. land that was allocated for the development under trans by transformation. N number two is the, the, the blue outline. Aren't that's those Long the monster? Aren't those the big single family mm -hmm. homes? So that's not 40 R. No. It is 40R, but the way they define it, what it, um, the reason we did that um, is the way the state spells out the incentive. So you can create an area where you want housing development. They will only give you an incentive payment for the affordable units, oh. but they also want to see production of okay. all types of housing. So, so they, what is affordable units? Um, so it it meets the needs of people who are um, have an income that is eighty percent or less of the area median income. So it varies by community. So right now, and it's done by based on your family size. Um, I'm this is a, kind of a made up number because I haven't Wait, checked yeah. it. So in the ballpark of um, I think it's around forty. To fifty thousand dollars a year for a family of three, I'm going to say two or three. So, and that may be a little bit high. So, I don't want you to pin your, but it's in that range, like high thirties to high forties. But does that limit. mean that in that sort of in the is there rent that we're selling the house to these people? Um, it doesn't matter. You can do rentals or home ownership units. But what um, when you um, are creating these units that you want to have count on the state's housing inventory, mm -hmm. you have to go through a specific lottery, pro uh, uh, what amounts to a lottery process to qualify um, people who have, who qualify based on their income to even be eligible to buy or rent those units. Um, and so there's a very strict guideline on how you qualify people who are eligible to rent or buy. So is there sort of like a Section 8 type fraud? Um, but, but with the ability to buy out? Yes, essentially. So back to Mark's question a little bit. So 40R encourages development. It incentivizes affordable development. Right. Okay. So you actually, I mean, it, there is a... It does both. So there's an incentive for the total number of units you could build in an area. So there's a pay, there's, there's sort of a two-step incentive from the state. One is if you create this area where you have higher density and you allow more units, you get a, um, a certain amount of money and it's based on how many units are allowed in that geographic area. And um, there are different tiers. Um, and then, so you get that right up front. Then, as the area builds out, you don't necessarily have to build all the units that are allowed in that area, but as they build out, for every affordable unit that gets built, then you get another payment on a per unit basis. So there is an incentive just for, for the affordable. units. Right. I mean, just for the units, yeah, and then right. an additional, additional one for right. the affordable. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a question? Uh, so the affordable is obvious. The units is to keep density high and sprawl low is that yeah. the objective yeah so they want to encourage <coughs> communities to um, build housing where it makes sense you yeah. can't you don't get approval for a 40 r district way out mm -hmm. um, just <coughs> double checking and then that, oh, Tess, I'll get you uh, go ahead 
Oh, right now? Yeah. Great. <laughs> so I know in our zoning, we don't, uh, in a general zoning district, we're never going to spot zone and, you know, kind of do something small scale, but the overlay is very parcel specific. Is yeah. there... Is there a building specific? <laughs> I mean, is there any reason, like, not like at Village Hill, for example, to just make the entire thing, even though we know that th there are units that are not affordable and that are already built? I mean, is there a downside? Like, is it cleaner for you guys or for it's the state? It's cleaner for us because what happens is if you just th put on the overlay and connect it, so we, we started out under that scenario just mm -hmm. connecting it because it looked cleaner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you have to subtract the roadways, and then you have to subtract the land that's already developed, and that ha that m oh, okay. um, rearranges the calculation for how much new development you're Got actually it. able to build. So with so this overlay, it's better to just do parcel by parcel right. basis. I'm still missing my questions like yours, but I'm missing why wouldn't you put this? What is the the state's resistant to us putting a 40R? In, in a very large area of the urban part of town. I mean, so if you got an affordable unit, you would get paid for it. I mean, that seems like the incentive is for the city to have 40R district overlay on a large area, and there's, I'm missing something. Um, it, it's very, um, it's, it's um, articulated very, um, I guess strictly in terms of what counts as already developed area um, versus what could potentially be developed um, and so it makes it complicated to go through that whole calculation if you take a large area that's partially developed and partially that's my easiest answer is based on the way they've set it up it makes it hard to do that. <laughs> <laughs> But what you're doing in lieu of that is finding properties that look like they're going to qualify and trying to catch a moving train. Right. So we don't leave money on the table, right, basically. Right. There's right. no reason to leave state money untapped. Oh, I so, yeah. Right. So that's I mean, we've talked about bef we, we've talked about when we've known projects that might come forward, whether or not there would be affordable units about putting an overlay because then that allows more density than the underlying district would normally allow. So in an area where it makes sense to do that, um, we've um, talked about doing that in various locations. You know, a while after we did this first one, we were thinking maybe the VA, that was before the VA had a whole new program because of right. all the conflicts we've had. Um, so it does, I think, you're right. We we're trying to be more strategic about where we do these things, but um, sometimes it's not. Yeah, you know. it just begs the question: Why were we doing it down yeah. to the lot level? Right. You know, that was right. Um, and and you do have to go. I see you have to go through the process with the state to submit and get you know get all the numbers right and do all of that to be ready to receive their money. Yeah. And so I was just wondering why a larger umbrella wasn't the approach. Yeah. But. Anne. Um. Am I correct that this originally it had a co-housing unit? That's what we approved. Right. Yeah, the transformation. And then they have given, they've held back some property for the potential of that co-housing. They've Where? held, right, Where? mass development. So on this far, I don't know if you'll see my cursor here. It's disappearing. It did. It, it went off to um, the right. So here's the track. No, you can't see it. So, um, uh, basically, do we see where the um, purple line jets in like that? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. That's the state. Well, that's part of, that's the detention pond, but it's just below that. Mm -hmm. This area actually covers that um, uh, ah. cluster or co-housing mm -hmm. because uh, um, those that area will be developed somehow, so we would put that into sort of the initial incentive um, funding that we might get. Um, but and we don't know what will happen. So Mass Development has said that they will hold back five plus five and a half acres yeah. if a developer is willing to come forward and build within that five and a half <coughs> acres. They have no problem with them doing a separate project in addition to inside inside the zone, not outside. Yeah, the zone. yeah. Wow. it happens okay. to be inside this zone, but for because this goes this is a little bit bigger than what uh, Mass Development has allocated for. Um, um, TCB, or not, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, community builders and. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
the community builders project <clears throat> does not include what was going to be co-housing. Okay. That's right. What is so that area is just remains under the control of mass development. Right. So far, all of it's <coughs> still mass development until well, right. yeah. Right. yeah. The project that we had previously approved for Hospital Hill had a um, separate living space joint use buildings, and there was sort of a cooperative living arrangement. So that was okay. that's what we're kind of referring to. It, it essentially it's just like a townhouse community only it's more intentional where a group of people come together and say we want to create the, um, a design for um, shared living spaces and you know a shared sort of communal structure um, but from a land use perspective it really functions like um, a condominium property you know where you've got joint ownership of the land, but you might have separate units on the one parcel. Okay, any other questions about the overlay for the 40R? Anybody settled on this one? Love to, love to have you do it. Zoning, <laughs> move approval of zoning ordinance amendment and modification to 350-20-20.940R <coughs> overlay to create a new overlay district associated and associated tax changes expand the 40-yard district at the former state hospital village hill project we're recommending approval approval and and seconds it all in favor thank you we are now past the 750 item which is a special permit for more than one <coughs> curb cut site plan reduction of required parking in atwood drive llc major project to construct a three-story 66,000 plus square foot and four-story 77,000 square foot office building with associate site work at 23 atwood drive north hampton map id 39-41 comma 43. move to continue to may 11. that test Seven moves to continue Seven. at 7 p.m uh mark seconds it all in favor of continuing Thank you. Move to adjourn. Oh, John, slow. Move trigger to tonight. adjourn oh. by Tess. Sorry. Yes. Second yes. by John. Jeez, I'm All in favor. Sleep the wheel. <laughs> slow on the update. I'll see you in the music group. <laughs>